you know where I used to work, right? Started as a glass collector in a pub. I went to be a glass collector in a nightclub and I worked there for a couple of years. I've worked race courses, I've worked in a restaurant. I did my work experience in a steel factory. Oh yes, and I also worked in a hotel for a bit. But my worst job was when I worked in a nightclub. And this is the job I used to work until I quit to pursue writing full time. So I worked in this nightclub and it was a shocking state of affairs, right? Just as a idea of the kind of place it was, we used to serve plastic glasses for people to drink out of. At the end of every shift we served the plastic glasses, my boss would tell me to go downstairs and pick them up off the floor so he could wash them and reuse them because it saved money. That is not a joke. But a lot of my friends worked there, so I didn't really mind it all that much. Eventually I got promoted so I was like a supervisor, which meant basically I get 20p more to come in an hour early than everyone else and open all the toilets. So I was then in charge of cleaning the toilets, which meant that I had to sometimes wade ankle deep in piss when the toilets overflowed to unclog the toilets, which I used to have to do with a mop by shoving it right down the end of the toilet. And the worst part is as well, I had to wear a shirt and tie. So I was wearing my, be I only had one shirt and tie because I was a fucking student. So I'm wearing my best clothes and I was standing ankle deep in piss, shoving a mop down a clogged toilet full of shit. It got to the point where I had to start leaving my shoes at work and wearing two pairs of socks. One pair with a carry bag over the top and another sock over that so my feet wouldn't get wet because I was spending so much time walking around in piss. Bear in mind, this was a nightclub and I used to sell tickets to VIPs. But the bonus of that was that every shift, every shift I had to go for, I would go and take a dump in the women's VIP toilets and then leave the seat up, just so I could. But anyway, that job was a bag of wank and I quit that job because I came in and it was a day. And we had a load of fresh starters coming in because it's the start of the new nightclub season with all the students there. And my boss said, Carl, the toilets are flooded. I said, for fuck's sake. Right, I'll go down and sort it out. And my boss goes, no, you send down a new starter. And I went, I'm not going to send a new starter down on their first day to unclog a toilet and walk around ankle deep in urine because they are not going to stay for another day. They'll quit straight away after that. Who the fuck wants to work that job? Let me do it, and then when they get used to how the place works, then they'll do it. No, you tell that person to go down and clean that toilet, or you're fired. So I just said, okay, bye. And I walked upstairs, I grabbed myself and I left. But that's not the end of it. That is the start of when I began to write for a living. I've worked other jobs since then, mostly because I got bored and I went to go work in a pub again, just to earn a bit of extra money. But that was the start of when I said, no, I'm writing for a living now. So I went home, I wrote a big, long, rambling Facebook post saying basically, here's all the shit they do. They reuse plastic glasses, they forge, they, and this is true, they asked me to sign retroactive safety forms because a girl fell over on broken glass. They got a safety form, changed the date, and asked me to sign it saying you clean the area so she doesn't get compensation from the foot. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. They did all this crazy, bull all this crazy illegal bullshit and I wrote that in a big Facebook post. And I topped it off with a big picture of me going, which Brad will put just behind me. And I sent that to them in an email. I got um, uh, a very polite Facebook message a few days later. Carl, please take that down or our lawyers will be in touch. I didn't take it down. But they did manage because they knew what I'd done and I put a complaint into the health and safety inspector. They managed to clean up just enough. So they didn't really get in trouble for it. That is what encouraged me to just like, fuck it. I would rather eke out a living writing articles and earning 150 pounds a week, staying in my friend's house in a tiny little box room, paying 40 pounds a week, than I would working this job and earning whatever they were paying me in addition. And that is how I arrived where I am today. You are more likely to go out of your way to do something for a boss who holds themselves to the same standards that they're insisting you stick to. And I had something similar at a job I used to work where I had three managers, because that's how you know it was poorly run, there were three fucking managers, and there was two managers that people liked and one manager that people didn't like. Yeah. And it got, it was so bad that if the manager people didn't like would call up and ask you to do a shift, you would just say no. And I distinctly recall many an occasion of that manager calling me up, Hi Carl, can you work tomorrow for like a five hour shift? So like, sorry, no, I'm busy. Yeah. Three minutes later, I get a phone call from the other manager saying, oh, hi Carl, love, um, do you mind coming in tomorrow? It's like, yeah, sure, for you, James, anything. <laughs> and I'd make sure I'd say that loud enough that because they sat next to each other on their, like, in their office yeah. that she'd hear me say, for you, James, 
anything. I mean, you want to do, you obviously, a boss who's nice to you, and like when we, at the end of a shift, when we sat there, it's like, oh fuck, we gotta like clean down. He'd rock up after doing all his paperwork and help us like, it's like, uh, like polishing cutlery, putting glasses away, relaying the restaurant. She would just sit there on fucking Facebook, like Queen Bee, mm -hmm. just sitting there going, ah. yeah. So it'd be a lot quicker if you helped. Everyone goes to that moment of just, fuck this. I remember it was when I was, I got a job so I could get a discount on a hotel. I work for a restaurant for a bit, it was owned by the Hilton. So I wanted to get a discount at the Hilton because we were going to a wedding. And I'd be like, I need that discount. It was a 90% discount. So I worked there not telling them, yeah, I plan on quitting in three months. But the Hilton, American company, American work ethic. Yeah. So what would happen was it'd be, okay then, uh, we've got a new system in place, a new electronic signing system. And if you are one minute late, one minute, you will be docked 15 minutes pay. Okay. That's um, extreme. Here, here's a fun fact about the law. If you ain't getting fucking paid, you don't fucking work. I did this job to get that discount and like, you know, just like, because my mate got me it. And I didn't tell him I was gonna quit, I felt really bad. <laughs> so, I don't give a fuck. I'll argue about this all day. What are they gonna do if they fire me? Oh no. I'll go back and just go sit at home and just write more article, bollocks to it. But I, I just came in, so like, Carl, you're a minute late. And what? Well, you've been docked 15 minutes. Oh, excellent, awesome. So I just like put, put the glasses down that I was cleaning and went and just sat down in the restaurant. It wasn't open, but I sat down, took my phone out. The f what are you doing? I, uh, I'm, I'm taking my break now. No, get back on, get back. You saw the like, thing, we opened in half an hour. Yeah. Am I being paid? No, you've been docked 15 minutes, now I'm not working. And like my boss, they, they couldn't understand. Yeah. Why aren't you working? I'm, th I'm telling you to work, but you're not paying me. And it just got to the point where I said, look, I'm happy to take this further. Would you like to go speak to your boss and tell them why you're trying to make me work when I'm not being paid? Yeah. Because I would love to have that conversation and hear you say it. And they just go, no. <laughs> so, and then a, a previous job I had, I, I, I was really bad. Because I didn't really need to have the job. I just liked having the extra bit of money and the social aspect of, yeah, it's like making new friends. You got like, people to go on nights out with and stuff like that. So it'd be, okay, you need to turn up 15 minutes before your shift for a briefing yeah. for an event. So, am I being paid? Well, no, but you need to, I'm not turning up then. No, but you need to be here 15 minutes early. Why? Because, so you can be brief. So that's work, yes? Well, yeah, it is for work, but it's not part of your shift. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> no. And I remember I came in five minutes early once and I put my headphones in and refused to listen to it. It was that same boss, that one I hated. Yeah. So he was a nice boss, I'd do it. And I remember having this argument very loudly on the bar as the big manager S walked past, like the person who's in charge of our department. Yeah. And I just said, I went, Deborah, let me just ask you something. If I'm not being paid, I don't have to work. Don't well, yeah, Carl, it's fairly standard. Yeah. Do you mind telling like, you know, her that? And just turned my boss like ran in like, yeah, I give a fuck. I'm sensing a story coming on now. Well, yes, there is, Brad, because as people who've watched these videos before may know, I used to work in a restaurant. And when I worked there, I always, always insisted upon taking a tea break every hour or so. And what I'd do is I'd do a loop around the restaurant. I'd ask every member of staff, would you like a cup of tea or a coffee? And I'll get you one. And uh, I used to do that with everyone who walked in, including our cleaning lady. However, the cleaning lady technically didn't work for the company that we did. She was an outside contractor. And my miserly boss, who I've again mentioned in other videos, didn't like this. And every time I made her a cup of tea, would complain about it. And I remember coming like, I think actual arguments with my boss about the fact I was making the cleaning lady, the person who literally cleaned up our shit, a cup of tea when she'd finished doing her shift. And this came to a head one day, and this is true. She was saying like, Carl, like, it's company money you're wasting here. Like, don't make tea for like, other people. Like, you've got a charger. Bear in mind, we charge £2.50 for a cup of tea. It's a fucking bag and some hot water. She didn't even have sugar in it, this clean lady. She just had a fucking tea with a splash of milk. So I remember I went, okay, I'll, I'm gonna double check this. And our big manager who ran like basically the entire division we were working for, we just sat having a free cup of tea for me. So I walked over and went, oh, hi there. Um, I've been talking to like, you know, the manager and I'm somewhere I met, we like, had an argument and wonder if you can like, you know, weigh in. And you can see my manager in the background fucking fuming. <laughs> because I, no, we were always told, don't go talk to this big manager. And I was like, no, fuck that. She gets people kissing her ass every day. She must love it when someone goes actually talks to her like a human being. So I proper went over and like, worked the Northern Charms. Like, all right then, how you doing? Do you want a drink, love? And she fucking loved that. And, yeah, um, uh, I'm being told that we can't give away cups of tea. Is that correct? And she went, well, that is correct, Carl. You shouldn't be giving away anything for free. And even to the cleaning lady, she went, what do you mean? I went, well, I like to give like, you know, our cleaning lady a cup of tea when she comes in each day. And she goes, well, that's perfectly fine. 
that's very polite of you, Carl. Who's saying you can't do that again? I went, oh, it's my manager over there. And just pointed right to her. <laughs> <laughs> she slung back into her office and went, why would she tell you off for doing that? That's very nice of you, Carl. I appreciate you doing that. It's always nice to look after like, you know, people who help us out. And I, went, I thought that too. Have a nice day. Would you like a refill on your coffee? And she went, oh no, I've had enough. <laughs> And from that day on, I never got told off and making. Joe, you know what? Every time she walked in, I made her two cups of tea. I made her one when she come in and one when she walked out. I started giving her tea to fucking go. Oh man, I just I can't I can't stand that attitude of people. It's like it's in the Magna Carta, man. Give people a cup of tea. We're entitled to it. You can't expect someone to pick up your shit and not have a cup of tea for it. Ridiculous. Well, at some point, you must have had a really shit boss. Uh, not as bad as Daniel Dancer was, but I did have a proper penny-pinching boss when I worked at the restaurant. Um, so I had a couple of bosses when I worked there, and there was just one of them who was just super, super arsy about any money being spent whatsoever. And no matter how many times I tried to explain to them, look, it's okay to like, let staff have like a pint at the end of a shift. Like You can say that pint can be sold to a customer for four pounds. Realistically, it costs this company nothing and what it does is it makes that member of staff feel like part of a team and makes them want to work a little bit harder the next time they come in because they feel like they're being like, you know, appreciated for the work they do. By being on their ass all the time, all you're doing is making sure they do the bare minimum when they turn up. And I had this, this big giant running thing with one, that boss about using my goddamn fucking phone. Because obviously like everyone has their phone on them at all times, like no one does like, and I never pulled it out on a shift, but like, if you've, there's no one in the restaurant, I've put it there and charge it. And I remember I was waiting, for, I was like, had it charging on the side, and while I was like, I'd served a customer and I noticed I had a message, so I clicked it and turned the screen off. And my boss went, give me that phone. Bearing in mind, there were like 40 customers at the bar. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, give me that phone. I said, no, it's my phone. I would like to go back to serving customers now. Don't talk to me like that. You're embarrassing me in front of these customers. Like, well, you're embarrassing me and you're making the company look bad. I want to go back to serving these customers. Thank you very much. It's like, give me your phone. I went, okay. And I picked them like, will you sign an agreement saying you are fully responsible for this phone? This phone is worth like 300 pounds. Will you sign an agreement saying you are responsible for it? No, I'll put it in the safe and you get it at the end of a shift. Will you sign an agreement saying you are fully responsible for this phone? No but give me your phone. No, I'm not giving you it, I'll put it in my pocket. Well, oh, you can go home. Because Carl, you've been like, I saw you look at it, that's wasting money. It's like more than we've wasted now. It's like, go home. So like, okay then, I'll go home. And I was like one of the only two people on the bar. It's like, okay, yeah. That argument for them to save their fucking ego because people were watching probably cost them like a hundred or so pounds that night because they didn't have as many people working on the bar. People just went fucking home. And that, but like, they used to do that all the goddamn time. And I remember having the meeting with my other boss the next day, Carl, I need your version of what went down. I went, oh, okay then. Um, that person, who I won't name, was a prick. This is an official report, Carl, I can't write that. Oh, can I write it then? They handed me the form and I filled in, so-and-so was being a prick. And I told them to F off. Are you sure you want this on your official report? Yeah, go on then, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Nothing ever came of it. No repercussions at all? No, because I was a good worker and that person was being a prick. And that person used to give away free drinks all the fucking time, so I just mentioned that. <laughs> so I just said, oh, it's funny how they're always on their phone. Oh, I'm a manager, I can do that. Well, technically you're not, you're a team leader. And you're supposed to lead by example. And how am I supposed to follow your example if you won't follow your own rules? And they fucking hated that. And then the manager above them went, well, he's got a point. You should put your phone in the safe. I'm not putting my phone in the safe. Because why would you expect Carl to do it? <laughs> it was great. That was, such a good, that was such a good week for me. I had so much fun. So I remember coming in. It's like, Carl, is your phone in your pocket? I went, yeah, it is. Because you have to give it to me. I'm like, no, I'm not. Because I'll go home. I was watching uh, Breaking Bad at the time. Do you want me to go? I was the only member of staff on. You can send me home if you want. Or I can stay here. And you can let me do my job. Oh, man. I was such a prick. Never hire me. Never hire me, folks. I, I can't believe, I can't believe I won this. I never thought that my work on the film Ordinary Day as a Teacher would have done so well. I've, uh, I've got a few people I'd just like to thank as well, while, while I'm here. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, my co-stars, uh, Coffee Soap, Joshua Knapp, and Ryan Ryder. The three of you were fantastic as the three wise men. 
I'd also like to thank uh, Liam and Aaron Clausen for the amazing script. I uh, I didn't see the twist coming. Plot twist. The grandma turns out to be a vampire. Uh, I'd also like to thank RR7567, the llama wrangler on set. Uh, My Shoes Hurt 69. I thought you were fantastic in the role of Alien Number 3. Uh, Shay Pinder, Samuel Chesser, and Chabisa Matawere, I would like to thank you as well. I would not have been able to come on set every day without you doing the catering of the prawns every single day. (laughs) (laughs) Why that one got me. It's the idea that they serve prawns every day. I'd also like to give big thanks to Sam Bartram and Sean Watson. Uh, You two were instrumental in helping me get that gorilla costume on. Uh, Michelle Michelle Holloman and Benjamin Fridman. And of course, how could I forget Matt Gilbert? Uh, The three of you in the human centipede scene, unforgettable. (laughs) Uh, Robert Hutton is uh, my manager, got me this role after my previous role as a garbage bag in House MD. Uh, Kynan plays games in Anixia. I I can't thank you enough for what you did for my career after that unfortunate skiing accident in the Bahamas. Brina Lawless and Nesta Railman, and of course, Jay Grid. Without the three of you, I would still be selling chairs at the local YMCA. And Darth Turkey 28... <laughs> Shut up! Darth Turkey 28... Honestly, one of the greatest people I've ever worked with. And I've worked with quite a lot of people who collect stamps. And finally, the director, Amy Brundridge. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, What you heard there, believe it or not, I'm going to tell you a secret. It wasn't people I was thanking for that film. They're actually patrons. And if you sign up to the Patreon, you can also have your name read out in whatever way we decide every single time we do this. You never know what it's going to be. Neither do we. We decided this yesterday. 